So our first topic uh, for today is hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia and their causes. Remember that there are two most common causes or two important causes of hypercalcemia. One is endocrinal and the other one is malignancy. So what is the, in the 90% of the patients, the cause of hypercalcemia is primary hyperparathyroidism. Parathyroid is a hormone that is secreted by the parathyroid gland and primary hyperparathyroidism can lead to hypercalcemia. But it is the most common cause of hypercalcemia. In 90% of the patient, the cause of hypercalcemia is primary hyperparathyroidism. What are the other endocrinal causes of primary hyperparathyroidism? The other endocrinal causes is thyrotoxicosis because high thyroid thyroxine levels lead to bone resorption. So that's why thyrotoxicosis can also cause hypercalcemia. A decent disease can also result in hypercalcemia because of loss of fluids and increased reabsorption of calcium in the kidney tubules in a decent disease. So it can also cause hypercalcemia. But you need to remember only hyperparathyroidism for PLAB1 exam as a cause of hypercalcemia. So hyperparathyroidism is the most common cause of hypercalcemia in non-hospitalized patients. In hospitalized patient, uh, the common cause is malignancy. So which malignancy can cause hypercalcemia? They are very simple. All the malignancies that can metastasize to bone. So the most common malignancy in females that metastasize to bone is breast cancer, while in males it's prostate cancer. So breast cancer in females and prostate cancer in males, they can metastasize to bones and they can cause hypercalcemia. Another malignancy that can cause hypercalcemia is multiple myeloma. Another malignancy that can cause hypercalcemia is squamous cell carcinoma. Why squamous cell carcinoma causes hypercalcemia? Because you all know that squamous cell carcinoma secrete a hormone that is parathyroid hormone. So which hormones are secreted by the small cell lung cancer? Which hormones are released by small cell lung cancer? ADH. ADH and? Which uh, is the other one? Parathyroid. ADH. Parathyroid is? I'm what sorry. is Dr. Abdullah? Uh, <clears throat> I said para parathyroid hormone, PTH. Parathyroid hormone is uh, secreted by uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Yeah. Small cell lung cancer secrete two hormones, and that uh, both of them start with an A. That is ADH and ACTH. ACTH. Yes. ADH and ACTH secreted by the small cell lung cancer, and parathyroid hormone by squamous cell lung cancer. So the causes of hypercalcemia are divided into two categories. One is endocrinal causes, that is primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common cause. And then there is malignancy. Uh, the malignancies that can metastasize to bone, such as breast cancer, prostate cancer, and multiple myeloma is also a cause of hypercalcemia because multiple myeloma also involves bone, bones. Another malignancy uh, that can lead to hypercalcemia is squamous cell carcinoma. So arcadosis can also cause squamous cell carcinoma because of increased senses of active form of vitamin D by macrophages in sarcoidosis. It can also result in hypercalcemia. The other less common causes are not important to remember. Just remember these causes. TSI diuretic can also cause hypercalcemia because it uh, increases the absorption of calcium in the kidney tubules. 
immobilization can also cause hypercalcemia because of resorption of the bones. Now, some causes of hypocalcemia. The most common cause of hypocalcemia is vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is basically involved in the absorption of calcium in the kidney tubules and in the GIT tract. So whenever there's deficiency of vitamin D, hypocalcemia will occur. Another cause of hypocalcemia is CKD because in CKD, active form of vitamin D is not synthesized, which leads to decreased calcium level in the blood. And hyperphosphatemia and hypomagnesemia, they both can cause hypocalcemia as well, because magnesium is required for the production of parathyroid hormone. So if there's low magnesium in the body, Parathyroid hormone will not be produced and it will lead to hypocalcemia. Hyperphosphatemia. How hyperphosphatemia can cause hypocalcemia? Because phosphate binds with calcium. So it can cause hypocalcemia. So the important causes of hypocalcemia is vitamin D deficiency, CKD, hyperphosphatemia and hypomagnesemia. Another cause is decreased production of parathyroid hormone, such as after thyroidectomy, because parathyroid glands are present on the posterior surface of thyroid gland. That's why after a surgery of a thyroid gland, the patient can develop the efficiency of parathyroid hormone which is known as hypoparathyroidism and which can lead to hypocalcemia. So the causes of hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia, are they clear to everyone? Now, what are the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia and signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia? To remember signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia, remember three words, moans, groans, and bones. Moans, high calcium level will lead to spasm in the GIT muscles and spasm in the splinters of the enteric tract. So the person will have abdominal pain and constipation. And due to pain, he will moans. So moans for abdominal pain and constipation, groans for depression, lethargy, and confusion, and increased thirst as well. Stones, high level of calcium, can lead to stones and plus increased thirst or polydipsia. And hypercalcemia can be associated with bone pain and fracture as well. So moans, groans, stones, and bones. These are the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia. In the PLAB1 exam, the common presentation of hypercalcemia is that a woman with breast cancer pre present to you with increased thirst, bone pain, then you will suspect hypercalcemia because high calcium level in the blood can lead to increased thirst. Similarly, a person with prostate cancer who present to you with increased thirst, polyuria, polydipsia, then again, you will suspect hypercalcemia. The sign, of, the sign and symptoms of hypocalcemia, two important signs to remember, in the diagnosis of hypocalcemia is joystick sign and torsal sign. What is joystick sign? Tapping the 
facial muscle or touching the face will result in twitching of the facial muscle so this is one sign of hypogalcemia and the other is chura sau sign what happens in chura sau sign if we compress the brachial artery with the cuff for 3 minutes this will happen the person has or will become like this flexed wrist with converging converged fingers so this is called tora sau sign the other signs and symptoms such as perioral paresthesia increased muscle tone impaired orientation anxiety and seizure can also occur so the important signs to remember in hypercalcemia is polyuria polydipsia in a patient with prostate cancer and breast cancer then you will suspect hypercalcemia while in a patient uh, patient with hypercalcemia will have a history of uh, thyroid surgery or vitamin d deficiency and two signs will be given such as jo six sign and jo south sign and also perioral paresthesia and spasm etc what are the ecg finding of hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia a short qt interval on ecg because there are more calcium so the heart muscles with depolarize and repolarize rapidly so the qt interval will become short but in case of hypocalcemia as there is low potassium or low calcium in the blood so heart muscle will take time to depolarize and repolarize so the qt interval will be long so in hypercalcemia short qt interval in hypocalcemia long qt interval what is the management of hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia the management of hypercalcemia is simple we give calcium gluconate 10% calcium gluconate iv and then we discharge the patient on oral medication oral calcium supplements while the management of hypercalcemia is a little bit different to increase the urinary excretion of calcium we give uh, normal saline so the initial step in the management of hypercalcemia is iv normal saline and the dose is 2 to 3 liters per day normal saline will increase urinary calcium excretion and the medication that we can give uh, to patient with hypercalcemia after normal saline is bisphosphonates such as pamidronate dolendronate alendronate and bisendronate nate all the drugs that are ending in the nate they are called bisphosphonates bisphosphonates basically reduce bone resorption so yes they can improve the symptoms of hypercalcemia alternative to because bisphosphonates have very side effects we can use calcitonin calcitonin is an alternate to calcium also decrease calcium levels or calcitonin is a hormone that can cause hypocalcemia so yes they can be used in the treatment of hypercalcemia calcium mimetic agents such as sinacalcit sinacalcit is basically act is just like a calcium that's why it is known as calcium mimetic agent calcium analogs that suppresses the parathyroid hormone production and if hypercalcemia is due to severe renal failure then dialysis is the option so the management the step step wise management of hypercalcemia is iv fluids and the second step bisphosphonates uh these two steps are important to remember and the other steps are not that much important because they are less commonly used so they will not be asked most probably in the plab one exam but still calcitonin can also be used in the management of hypercalcemia 
and calcimimetic agents such as cinnac calcium hydrochloride can also be used because this suppress the production of parathyroid hormone. Is it clear, everyone? Is there any question? So, when to use Dina Suma? Dina Suma uh, is used if there is the patient symptoms are not improved with the lindrinic acid and the other management option. Okay. It is a monoclonal antibody. It is not commonly used. Right. So the chances are very less that they will be, it will be asked in the lab one exam. So now we are going to discuss uh, the causes of hypercalcemia one by one. So the, the most common calcemia in a non-hospitalized patient is hyperparathyroidism. Now, what can cause hyperparathyroidism? Hyperparathyroidism can be caused by, there are two types of hyperparathyroidism. One is primary hyperparathyroidism. Primary means when there's problem in the parathyroid gland. This, these are four parathyroid glands, one, two, three, four, which are present on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. So whenever there is a problem in the parathyroid gland, what problem in the parathyroid gland can cause an excessive production of the parathyroid hormone, either a parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia of the parathyroid gland or a carcinoma of the parathyroid gland. All three of them are the problems in the parathyroid gland that can lead to excessive production of the parathyroid hormone. So the lab abnormality will be increased parathyroid hormone. Remember that parathyroid hormone hate phosphate and it loves potassium or calcium. So when there is high production or high level of parathyroid hormone, what will happen? hypercalcemia and hypophosphatemia. Calcium level will increase in the body because parathyroid hormone causes an increase in the absorption of calcium in the GIT and increase in the absorption of calcium in the kidney tubules and increase phosphate excretion. So hypercalcemia, hypophosphatemia and increased PTH level it will make a diagnosis of primary hyperparathyroidism. What is primary hyperparathyroidism? Primary means the problem is in the parathyroid gland itself. Primary hyperparathyroidism is associated with MEN1 and MEN2A and the treatment is surgery. We discuss a drug as well that suppresses the parathyroid hormone level. And which was this drug? This drug was calcimimetic agent such as senacalcid hydrochloride. So if the person is not fit for surgery, then we can use calcimimetic agent such as senacalcid hydrochloride. So what is secondary hyperparathyroidism? Secondary hyperparathyroidism is due to a cause other than in the parathyroid gland, such as low calcium, because low calcium will stimulate the production of parathyroid hormone from parathyroid gland. So the cause of hyperparathyroidism is basically not the parathyroid gland, but some other cause such as low calcium. So this hyperparathyroidism is known as secondary hyperparathyroidism, which is due to low calcium or vitamin D, low vitamin D. So which are the condition that is associated with low vitamin D? That is CKD, chronic kidney disease. So in chronic kidney disease, we all know that the active form of vitamin D is produced in the kidney. So when there is chronic kidney disease, the active form of vitamin D will be not be produced and it will lead to low calcium or hypocalcemia. 
so low vitamin d is a cause of hypocalcemia and the hypocalcemia will stimulate the production of parathyroid hormone so the person will have increased pth low or normal calcium the calcium level will be normal or low initially they will be low which will lead to an increase in the production of parathyroid hormone and this parathyroid hormone then the calcium level towards normal so if in the labs calcium is low or normal and pth is high and phosphate is also high normally if there is high pth phosphate should be low like in primary hyperparathyroidism because pth causes a increase excretion of the phosphate but because the person is having ckd kidney tubules are damaged so phosphate cannot be excreted that's why high phosphate high pth and low or normal calcium will make a diagnosis of secondary hyperparathyroid is this point clear to everyone the difference between primary and secondary hyperparathyroidism on the basis of lab findings is there any question okay now tertiary hyperparathyroidism now to understand tertiary hyperparathyroidism you need to understand secondary hyperparathyroidism so what was the problem in secondary hyperparathyroidism in secondary hyperparathyroidism due to low vitamin d there was hypocalcemia which leads to the production of pth so this increased pth increase the calcium level towards normal so when the calcium levels become normal then the production of this pth will decrease but in long standing chronic kidney disease what happens the parathyroid gland become autonomous it keep on secreting the parathyroid hormone even if the calcium levels become normal so what will happen the calcium level will increase because of the autonomous production of the pth such as that happen in the tertiary hyperparathyroidism what is tertiary hyperparathyroidism in long standing chronic kidney disease the parathyroid gland become autonomous autonomous means it evade the feedback inhibition of calcium so in simple words what is the difference between primary secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism if phosphate level are low then it is primary hyperparathyroidism low phosphate high pth primary hyperparathyroidism while in secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism phosphate levels are high high phosphate and high phosphate so it's simple high pth and low phosphate it's primary and the cause will be adenoma or carcinoma or hyperplasia now we are left with secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism both of them occurs in chronic kidney disease so how you are going to differentiate between secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism there is only one point to differentiate between these two and that is calcium levels in secondary hyperparathyroidism the calcium level will be low or normal and in tertiary it will be high because of autonomous production of pth due to long standing kidney, chronic kidney disease autonomous production means calcium won't be able to inhibit the production of pth from the parathyroid gland so that's why this high pth 
even though the calcium level will become normal it will increase the calcium level to beyond the normal so the difference between secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism is low or normal calcium it is secondary hyperparathyroidism high calcium it is tertiary hyperparathyroidism is this point clear to everyone Uh, there is any question then ask please so who will tell me the difference between secondary and tertiary upper parathyroidism Uh, Dr. Joe, can you tell us the difference between secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism? Dr. Joe, are you with us? Yes, I'm here, Doc, but um, I haven't fully grasped the differences yet. so first of all uh, it's hyperparathyroidism so pth will be high is that right yes so the hyperparathyroidism is secondary hyperparathyroidism means hyperparathyroidism is uh, due to a disease of uh, some organ that is outside the parathyroid gland such as kidney so the cause of secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism is ckd so pth will be high in both of them in secondary and in tertiary and phosphate will also be high because there is chronic kidney disease and in chronic kidney disease phosphate is not excreted because of damage to the kidney tubules is that right yes so high phosphate and high pth the diagnosis can either be secondary hyperparathyroidism or a tertiary hyperparathyroid because in both of them pth and phosphate will be high now how to differentiate between these two to differentiate between these two we need to look at calcium levels if calcium levels are high then it means it is an autonomous production of pth so it is tertiary hyperparathyroidism and if the calcium levels are normal or low then it is secondary hyperparathyroidism got it now so what do you mean by an autonomous production autonomous production means normally pth is under the feedback control of calcium if there is high calcium pth will be the pth production will be suppressed if there is low calcium pth production will be high autonomous production means the feedback inhibition or the control of uh, release of pth by calcium is or you can say in other words in simpler words that pth is free from the feedback inhibition of calcium autonomous it's fully automatic it's not under the control of anything it's not under the control of calcium okay got it so autonomous means pth is high and calcium is high which should not normally happen because with the high calcium pth should be low because of feedback inhibition 
but in tertiary hyperparathyroidism because there is autonomous production of PTH. So that's why this PTH is not under the control of calcium. That's why calcium high, PTH high means tertiary hyperparathyroidism or it means autonomous production of PTH. Understood, thank you. Now, please can you repeat uh, the difference between secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism? Um, so in both of them, you'll see high PTH levels and high uh, phosphate levels, but the difference Why is- Why high phosphate levels? Um, I forgot that. Normally, phosphate should be low because PTH leads to an excretion of the phosphate. Oh, yeah, in the kidney tubules, there's yes. but failure to, of excretion. Yes. Chronic kidney disease, chronic kidney disease can lead to secondary or tertiary hyperparathyroidism. So the phosphate level will be high because kidney is unable to excrete uh, the phosphate. So, yes. can you repeat it again now? High PTH, high phosphate. Now, yeah, differentiate high between secondary and tertiary. So, the distinguishing factor will be that in tertiary, calcium will be high, whereas in secondary, calcium will be either low or normal. This is in secondary, it's expected to be low or normal because of the negative feedback of calcium and, and PTH. But in tertiary, there is something called autonomous um, something, which basically means that the parathyroid hormones are free of the, of the negative feedback mechanism with calcium. Yeah, so are both are high. Yes, that's right. So, is it clear to everyone else also? Dr. Abdullahi and Dr. Shafraz. Is it clear to you guys as well? Yes, yes, Doc. Uh, for me, yes, sir. it's clear. Um, we said that in primary, the parathyroid hormone will be elevated. Uh, the calcium yes. will be elevated as well, but the phosphate yes. will be will be low. Uh, yes. It's most commonly caused by a parathyroid adenoma. So for yes, right. secondary, uh, we have excessive PTH production uh, to compensate for the prolonged hypocalcemia. Um, yes. So it leads to an elevated PTH, but the calcium will be either low or normal. So for tertiary, we said the parathyroids autonomously produce PTH, which follows prolonged secondary hyperparathyroidism. So the labs will be similar to primary hyperthyroidism, but with CKD. That's right. So in short, if uh, you want to differentiate between primary and secondary and tertiary, then we look at the phosphate level. If the phosphate levels are low, then it's primary. If it's high, it's either secondary or tertiary. Then to differentiate between secondary and tertiary, we, look, we need to look at calcium levels. Calcium level if low or normal, then it's secondary. And if calcium levels are high, then it's tertiary. So the causes of uh, primary hyperparathyroidism is parathyroid adenoma, carcinoma, or hyperplasia. What will happen? calcium increases and phosphate decreases because PTH hates phosphate. So it will decrease phosphate and it will increase calcium because it loves calcium. So how PTH increases calcium uh, through bone resorption, through GAT absorption and through kidney absorption. How it decreases phosphate, uh, it excrete the phosphate in the kidneys.
So in labs, we already discussed PTH will be increased, calcium will be increased, phosphate will be decreased. So what are the signs and symptoms of uh, primary hyperparathyroidism? Uh, increased calcium will cause symptoms of hypercalcemia that we have already discussed. Moans, groans, bones, and stones. And high PTH will cause bone pain because of resorption of bone. And due to resorption in the bone, the person will have fragility fractures or pathological fractures. Fracture with minor trauma are called fragility fracture. What is the management of primary hyperparathyroidism? Sena calcite can be used because it's a 